I chose to go to Morocco a few years ago, before this wonderful pandemic, without hand luggage, a small backpack as we were going to travel with our luggage on our backs to the desert, then to the mountains with no fixed place to sleep for the whole stay. So we arrived in Bergamo, after about 3 hours we boarded the plane to Marrakesh, another 3 and a half hours and we arrived in Africa for the first time. We then took a bus to their main square, Jamal Fna. From here, we used Mapsme to guide us to our accommodation. Labyrinths, madness, different kind of life, motors, bikes, crowded, oriental smells, small streets. Without Mapsme, I don't think we had any chance of finding it. We eventually found the place we were staying in Medina at Riyadh Dar Nael. Arriving at the accommodation, we were a bit shocked by the bathroom door, which was actually a curtain. <laughs> then we went back to town. The nightlife here is crazy. Cyclists, mopeds, crowded, everyone says it's not that way. It's close where we walk. In a world, good luck with the GPS. We walked to the market and ate traditional food. People at the restaurant stalls cheered when new customers came to them. To the market, there were circles of people around snakes, people with monkeys, street fights, boxing, and the whole gamut of nightlife. It's much quieter during the day. The next day we also start to get into this trading game. We got mask, amber, their traditional spice, ras al hanut, and other things. We ate at a small restaurant in the back street. We then visited El Badi Palace. We also negotiated for the next two days trip in the desert. Our life here is a kind of a monopoly, negotiation after negotiation. Already the streets are starting to feel familiar. Already we're getting used to this infernal traffic jam. We took a trip to Merzuga from our hotel in Medina, Riyadh Darnail. We were able to leave some of our luggage at our accommodation, saving a day stay for Wednesday evening. We were taken early in the morning, somewhere in the market, and put on a minibus with other travelers. The drive from Marrakesh to Merzuga is about 560 kilometers. Very tiring, but nice after all. Long drive stops at uh, Ait Ben Hadou Castle, where a lot of movies have been filmed from 1961 Lawrence of Arabia to Gladiator, Asterix and Cleopatra. Prince of Persia or some parts of Game of Thrones. I could already see Khaleesi there with the dragons. We then passed through Wazazet, visited a few keys and had a Berber omelette with salad and oranges here. We stopped again in the last village before the desert, Risani. Got water, drank a coffee, then arrived in the desert. The driver dropped us off in a Ksar Tanamuse as the three of us had something private, something quieter, the three of us with three camels. Mine was older and named Bob Marley, and uh, Ahmed, of course, the guide. Ahmed walked us about an hour and a half, about five kilometers. I also saved the track. We took pictures of the sunset. We kept meeting up with various other groups. got to our tents. We had the traditional lunch, then sat by the fire and looked at the stars. We played a bit of drums too. The moon came out around 10. I didn't know that in Africa the moon doesn't appear as it does here, as it gets dark. Quiet evening. I needed a bit of quiet after all the crowd, the craziness and stuff like that. I also learned from Ahmed that it's a small desert, 5 to 6 kilometers wide to Algiers and uh, 55 to 60 kilometers long. I was thinking of the game I played as a kid and the movie, of course, Dune. We then did the five kilometers or so back after walking up around five o'clock. We went with Bob Marley and company night vision. When we arrived, Ahmed presented us some fossils he had processed from the desert. We had breakfast around seven. Our group drove up to pick us up and the road quickly went back with no more stops. Back to Marrakesh in the evening, we ate in the market again. 
and at the end the famous Berber whiskey or mint tea. We leave early in the morning to the central market looking for taxis to Emlil, which more or less wanted to steal you. We eventually find a kind of a maxi taxi collectivo as they say. We arrive in Emlil and start the climb. Many with donkeys, with luggage, with a lady who can't move her butt on the hill and so on. Very good weather. We find water above, fill our bottles and find some orange juice. Wow, good stuff. We made it about five and a half hours to the refuge. Arrived uh, around uh, five something. Approximately 11 kilometers of hiking, about 1,400 meters of ascent, from 1,800 meters to 3,177 meters. At the refuge, all nice and fine. Slept from about 9 to 6 in the morning, with the summer bag covered with a blanket. The next day, up in the morning, we set off to the summit. Very good snow, no snow line needed at all. We left our luggage at the refuge and just took a backpack with some clothes, water and sweets. We did about 3 hours to the top at 4,180 meters. Almost everyone who climbed had guides who made them carry ice axes, carpoons and such. We climbed gently, wearing running shoes. I put a snow line on the descent for about 5 minutes, then held it in my hands, as it was a snow only good for sliding. We got down to the bottom of the summit in about 40 minutes. We also found our Moroccan friends up there, whom we kept seeing on the trail, and others, each with their guides. Arriving at the refuge, we picked up the luggage we had left here, packed our bags, ate some more of what we had with us, and headed down the valley. In about three hours, we reached Imlil. Back in Marrakesh, we kept looking for a motel. We finally ended up at the motel Mimosa and got a triple room. Then the next day, we packed our bags and walked to the airport. We stopped a juice shop to park in the shade. We almost missed our plane, but it all turned off fine. We arrived in Bergamo, checked into our Airbnb iParty. The next day, we were rushed to the airport and home sweet home. In conclusion, thank you for virtually traveling with me, and perhaps I have inspired you to visit a country where you can visit from the dry desert to the highest peak of Atlas Mountains, spiced with the monopoly of daily life in Morocco.